Welcome back to another episode of Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers. I'm your host, Austin Duncan. Yet again, no Blaine. Still sick. I don't know if we're going to have to start calling out a search party. What the hell's going on? But the guy's still not here. Um, so hopefully we'll, he'll be back next week. Blaine, you're watching this. Hope you're feeling better. Um, but we do have a great episode planned uh, for today. So, uh, you know, when we started this podcast, um, we always said we wanted to bring on three different kinds of guests. Uh, one being the people who worked on the Halloween films, whether they were behind the scenes or in front of the camera. Two being people from the community, the, the, the people that, you know, either, either push merchandise or, or are involved um, in, in the making of independent masks, et cetera. And three... <clears throat> true bona fide fans of the franchise, the people that carry on the magic uh, post Halloween in between the movies. And, and that's exactly what we've got here tonight. Um, and I'm going to bring him on in a second. His name is Eric Vobeda, and he is the lead singer of die ghost and also a die hard Michael Myers fan. So uh, without further ado, Eric, how's it going, man? Hey, good. How are you doing so good now eric tell us a little bit about the band i've been listening all day in preparation for the interview freaking awesome music man first of all like I i'm a fan of you so so pumped to have you on the show thank you i had to correct you so uh i'm not the lead uh vocalist i'm the lead guitar so i was given incorrect um, information it's I'm okay so sorry <laughs> it's okay he might have uh yeah i mean when blaine heard he probably saw lead and maybe assume that i'm guessing but yeah i'm the guitarist i do backups in the band and um you know we're a four piece so the other guys they do most leg work which is cool about this band is it's it's a two vocalist band so you know you have your elements of bowie and elvis and danzig meets motorhead and the unseen and the vandals and stuff so it's a great combination of a little bit of everything uh which is just right up my alley when i joined this band i i knew from the second that i was gonna love it you know not just horror related but music wise so totally and and like yeah like i said i've been listening all day and it, it's good to know now that there are two vocalists because going through it i'm like whoa this this one sounds completely different than the other um but but it's it's such great music man and and uh for me, it's it's kind of I I'm, I enjoy kind of that like '80s metal um, kind of vibe, and then like pop punk, and it's kind of a nice mm -hmm. blend of that, and it's it's really awesome. Um, and I wanted to talk about now. Obviously, we're going to get into the Halloween movies a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but but just right off the bat, so the first song I ever played was "The Change," and that kicks mm -hmm. off with the Texas Chainsaw uh, Massacre. You know, kind of the the, the chainsaw yeah yeah it's it, it's mm -hmm. awesome so so talk about how horror has has influenced your music yeah i mean horror punk in general is uh, is what we would consider ourselves you know there's elements of rock and punk and maybe slightly metal but the horror punk side of it it's just it's a fun uh theme to run off of i mean um Adam and Matt have been the originators of this band since uh, the early, like, 2000, mid-2000s, kind of. like I mean, So it's been about 10 years, about. And that's kind of the idea that they ran with, you know, is just um, Halloween, Nightbreed, Night of Living Dead, Texas Chainsaw, and kind of incorporating that. But not making it feel forced. It just kind of came naturally with the music. And then adding those little flavors is, is really cool. Like, you know, the vampire themes. And, I mean, it, those guys are really um, well-written artists that blend vocal range, melodic everything, and then add the horror on top of it. So it's really attractive to people like us, you know, and then, you know, fans like that. So... Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Like there, there are times where I get like, and, and I know exactly what you mean. This, this, uh, horror punk, like I think of like Iron Maiden and how some of those vibes, yeah. like I listen to a lot of ghost as well. Um, and, and the like creepy undertones behind everything. But like you're saying, it's not, it's not beating you over the head with it. Like I've seen done, um, where, where every song is, 
I, you know, I, I've seen an act where every song is based off of uh, a different uh, uh, serial killer, and it just it, it can be overdone. And uh, <laughs> I don't get that vibe at all uh, here. And and like, yeah, um, for, for people who haven't heard like songs like Last Words, um, um yeah. amazing example of that. Yeah, and that's exactly it. These guys and us, we're just not. A one trick pony that's the best part about it like i just played my first because i'm new to this band so i just played my first set with these guys last thursday and i mean the response immediately because of a the tightness but the tonal diversity of this band i think you know my mom can like it <laughs> you know uh you know my grandma can like it that's the cool part about it it's it's, it's just not a one trick pony it really isn't so yeah yeah, no, I mean, the the diversity, I mean, obviously, uh, again, for the people that haven't heard of you, you've got some, like, hardcore, you know, in-your-face bangers, but then you've got, again, songs like Last Words, um, and I think my favorite probably is Afterlife One, that are just, like, cool. truly beautiful, like, you could you could listen to it whenever, and then you also have this stuff where, like, if you're pissed off and want to rage against the world, y- you got that, too, Um so yeah, mm-hmm. no, I'm I'm extremely impressed, and and I just figured out uh, this is a Minnesota based band. I'm mm-hmm. we're neighbors, man. Yeah, I think one of the things that Blaine and I connected on right away is was the Crypticon dealio. So uh, Die Ghost has been at the Crypticon a few years prior to my entrance, and been just like kind of showing the awareness. They've had tables there, and. Yeah, I mean, we've been around Minnesota, the Midwest in general, uh, branching the music out into Europe as well, too. Now, at this point, there's going to be a new release um, of four new songs that we just started teasing at the live show. So stuff you haven't heard yet is even just that much better. Songs like Phantom, Wake the Dead, um, The Wreckage, Demon. You know, I mean, there's just so many cool songs that really go hand in hand. And Last Words is going to be one that is uh, also released on that. which is one of my personal favorites too, the stand-up bass. Um, you know, the the play on words and choices that these guys have are, are really, really impressive. So I, I relate a lot like how you felt that too, you know. I'm a Ghost fan as well. Um, so you hear all of those little elements. And I'm a huge Descendants fan as well too. So you hear a lot of that, just like the uh, the fun elements while it's still dark and you know, natural. So nothing's forced, which is great. I mean, as a guitar player, um, I've been in a lot of other bands that um, have been around Minnesota, you may have heard of. And uh, this band is <laughs> the biggest guitar challenge that I've ever had to go about here. Um, I mean, you, the, the, like it's galloping, but with your arms and hands to really keep that element. I know I look stupid doing that, but that's what like my hand does as playing guitar uh, for that whole process because that's what it feels like. It's 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 a full on exercise, so it's really cool. I I believe it, man. Some of those songs yeah. are energetic as hell, and uh, I gotta imagine you're yeah. you're feeling pretty uh pretty worn down by the end of the concert. Um, but now now I gotta come see you guys because I just figured out this yeah. Minnesota thing. Um, but I have to, I have to say, uh, you know, for you just joining the band, looking behind you, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing these universal, uh, posters. I'm seeing Michael Myers masks. This, this band was, was waiting for you, man. Like they couldn't have picked a better guy. (laughs) You know, it's funny. So, uh, uh, just to give you kind of a quick story, this other band that I've been part of for the past 10 years is called Via. And we're like a hard rock metal band from the cities. We've been around a long time and we've done a lot of cool things. And uh, when I joined that band in 2013, I went on Craigslist and met the singer, so on and so forth. The rest is history. Uh, we released a record last year and the record um, um, came out and the drummer and bass player basically kind of disbanded the band ultimately. Okay. So, we took, you know, the winter to uh, do family thing and all that stuff. Restart next year, more or less, if that's the case. So I went on Craigslist, really kind of looking for other opportunities, maybe drummers for the band, so on and so forth. And then the posts that Die Ghost put up came on there. And I'm like, they didn't put their name, who they were. But I kind of had a feeling because I knew who the band was. I've seen them before. And 
I almost was kind of like nervous. I'm like, okay, what did I just open myself up into? And then they brought me into rehearsal. I learned the songs and the rest is history. It's the same concept. And that's exactly what I've said to everybody too. It's been waiting for me. It's, um, those guys uh, are have been nothing but open arms with me. And um, I feel really humble and welcomed. So uh, being a part of the punk and horror community, which I've always been a part of in one way or another, maybe not playing musically because I've been more on like the metal side, but that all goes hand in hand. So, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. that, that's like some classic rock star shit, man, to go on, <laughs> on Craigslist and find the band. Like that's, that's not yeah. a movie, bro. Yeah, like the Recycler in L.A. times when you hear that from Metallica and all those bands, too. It's the same same concept, but just in a modern day world, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. so cool. So so let's let's talk back. Let's rewind a little bit. Uh, tell me about you specifically and uh, maybe some of your early horror memories. And then we'll we'll work our way to Michael Myers, unless your first horror memory is Michael Myers, which can't get any better than that um horror it, it probably is michael myers honestly i mean i remember so i grew up in northern minnesota and my mom my mom's first like real deal going to a horror movie was 78 she went there when she was on vacation with my uncle they were in oregon they saw the in the newspaper this movie halloween they just went and gotten they just went and seen grease like because it came out right at the same time and they're like okay well this looks really cool too so when i was 10 years old my mom had the vhs and she's like have fun you know the the rest yeah. was really history you know so that would have been in like the late 90s at that point and i uh it was an instant gratification i mean like you know the the whole sleeve um you know, I got so obsessed even during COVID, like, because I'm a collector of knickknacks and all that stuff. So I decided yeah. I wanted to have every single Halloween on VHS just because, you know. Yeah, um, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, cool stuff like that. And then, then that led to go and see, you know, Resurrection and Eaters, which was only a few years after that. And then, um, but just like any kid, I thought, you know, Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger were great too. And you know, all that stuff that just goes hand in hand and natural with it. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there is, I think you see it maybe a little bit more in the Friday, the 13th films, that connection between like metal and horror. Um, yeah. but, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's clear. I, there's the, the Venn diagram of, of people who listen to metal music and who like horror, mu horror movies is, very much overlapping. I mean, there's such a, such an influence on the community. So it is really cool to see a guy like you, um, you know, keeping it alive. Cause I think it, it was more apparent, you know, maybe back in the eighties, um, than it is today. You don't see in, in music as much today that, that influence of horror. So I'm glad, uh, you and the rest of die ghost are keeping that alive. Thank um, you. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you um, then, because clearly Halloween is is a big part of of your horror background. Uh, can you tell me your your your? Let maybe let's start with your least favorite movie because that's often more the uh, the contentious part. Um, and you know, Blaine and I are obviously big fans of the new ones, but that is uh, not a commonly shared experience across the uh, horror community. Sure. Dude, the new series I thought saved everything. Um oh, if we were upstairs in yeah, if we were upstairs in my um in my bedroom. So my my wife and I were going to remodel everything, but I was fortunate and lucky enough to get um from each movie one of the uh in theater posters. So I have 2018 kills and ends. Uh, the the 18 and kills are you know kind of like your regular 48s. The ends is like the subway poster. And oh hell yeah, um, yeah, and they're really hard to find. And so I thought they were absolutely wonderful. I mean, there was a minute there when 18 came out. I was so excited because obviously we hadn't seen a Halloween movie in a long time that I thought it was my current favorite. Um, you know, I kind of dabble around that 
but uh, no, I think I think eighteen is a solid one yeah. anywhere for anybody who thinks that's the uh, their favorite. Yeah, um, least favorite man. I, I'm gonna go with the first one I saw uh, in theaters was probably Resurrection, honestly, and I think it's a good movie, especially the beginning of it. I think there is a really good story that's being told, but then it kind of just goes really, I mean, the Weinsteins and stuff like that, that stuff got really weird. I mean, those fuck, sorry, can I swear? Um, the, uh, go, go fuck around as much as you want it today. Yeah. Those guys are fucked up. So totally, you yeah. know, if you know their whole story and everything, but just everything with dimension, it's all icky, you know? And, uh, but yeah, I mean that, I think the first 15 minutes of resurrection is, is cool. I get why they did what they did, but when they went into like, you know, everything else it is just whatever. So, um, I think that's one of your first movies you saw too in theaters, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So I was, I was still pretty young when, uh, resurrection came out but that was the first one that blaine saw in theaters okay and that's what it was yeah yeah we've kind of talked about how even though like yeah it's definitely one of the shittiest in the franchise that it, it holds a really special place for our heart in that same reason so i wasn't going yeah. to the theater but i was pretty much like at the door when blaine came home going like tell me what happened give me beat <laughs> beat by beat what what the movie was um just because I wasn't old enough to, uh, you know, sit down in a movie theater. Yeah, it's uh, pre YouTube and stuff too. So yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I agree. Yeah, it's it's a special place that movie in its own way. But if I had to go on the ranker, it'd probably be my least. So you know, yeah, yeah. That's that's. Uh, I think I think a lot of people have that that same feeling. It it just it doesn't stack up to even some of the the weirder entries. I think like a lot of the sequels. <laughs> that four or five, six range gets really weird, especially towards the end of that. Um, but, but when you hold it up to, to resurrection, yeah, there's just a big difference in sort of how serious they take, um, that character. But we, we, we talked with like, like, uh, Brad Lurie who played Michael Myers in that film. And, you know, I think he did an excellent job. There's lots Agreed. of great parts about that movie. Yeah. Uh, that, it, it's still like it holds a good place in my heart. I even the worst Halloween, you know, big fan. They're still fun to watch, but uh, yeah, no, I I, yeah. I get why you would you would say resurrection. So let me flip it around then. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you you've hinted at eighteen, but but yep. what, what's your go to? You're going to turn on Halloween. What's your favorite one? <sighs> God, I wish I could just say it's high, you know. Um, yeah. But the thing about, like, as it, like, okay, let me like kind of revamp it with music for an example. So, I love it. Technology has made music sound better, minus like when you talk Neve councils and things like that that have made records sound so good, right? Right. So the thing about film is, I mean, they made. 78 on such a low budget it still holds up and looks really good but let's just be honest it's just like none of them were real actual actors you know there's a couple no. of real actors in it but there's not so the actual movie side of it the acting part of it's kind of bad but it holds up yeah. in its own way yeah so 78 will always be like a favorite like number one but that's what i loved about 18 so much is that it it um uh, redeveloped a story and left on a cliffhanger that was so good so it was yeah. just the same cliffhanger as 78 so i mean god i mean that's kind of like a tie really and then you know as actual yeah i'm just gonna run with kind of a tie between 18 and 78 honestly so i'll i'll take it man because because i think it's yeah. totally fair it's tough and and part of me when I ask that question always wants to go seventy eight excluded. What's your favorite? Because I think a I, I think there's a lot of pressure on people to say that seventy eight is is the greatest Halloween because it is the yeah. you know the the magnum opus of of John Carpenter and it's like this you know s cinema classic now. Um, yeah, but but it's almost like kind of a, a cop out answer even for me because I do say it's my favorite. But but it's, yeah. it's because nobody can really refute seventy eight being your favorite. So I'm always kind of interested in that number two, or in your case, the tie. Um, and I think Halloween eighteen is a perfect perfect one to uh, 
put up there. I, I think it's probably the strongest, like true Halloween film out of the newest three. Um, yeah. And, and you talked about it earlier that, that like the vibe of going back to the theater for the OG Michael Myers, like not a remake. This is a continuation of the same story of that 78. That is, you know, like I said, a, a cinema classic. Uh, so, so what do you like about that film? Yeah. And I think what I actually forgot to kind of finish on, like talking about music going in with that. So music has developed over the years has gotten better with, you know, pro tools and recording equipment and so many things that you can make such good records on. So for example, like uh, the um, EP with um, decay and afterlife one, two um, and um, got him drawn a blank on the other one. But anyways, that was all done at home. And it's a really good sounding record all at home. There's no producers other than the band, everything. It was mastered by somebody, but there's just so much art to that. So going to that with film, obviously there's bigger budgets and things like that that you could tell with a modern day Halloween movie, but that makes it look better. It makes it sound better. It makes the whole vibe just better. And I think that's what I really enjoyed about the current trilogy is that everything just looks and sounds so much better that it pulls you in. And so you just throw John Carpenter on top of that and then it's a home run, you know? So <laughs> totally. there's that. And then, I mean, I, I like the story. I like the story a lot. I think they really ran with it. Um, out of the whole trilogy, I have my opinion on how I wish it would have ended. Um, sure. Not that I hate how it ended because I don't, but I, you know, 18... I thought left on an amazing cliffhanger and there's just the story with the, the girls and everything is really cool. I think there's so much more story to be told. It's kind of too bad that, you know, Jamie Lee had to kind of end while she did, but it makes sense. I mean, they're older people. Yeah, so, totally. you know, she's been doing yeah. it for 45 years. I, I, you know, we're, we're yeah. lucky we got three more with her, but yeah, I hear you. No I could have, I could have gone for another 10. Yeah. I mean like the husband, all this, I mean, there's so much that it could, could be doing you know so i respect what she did for that and not even just as like a cash grab as in like a, she did it for the fans trying to uh keep this alive for people to be happy as the years go by because this franchise will never end i mean it's like dracula and frankenstein at this point you know i'm excited when they'd start doing you know friday the 13th again and you know I, that, so. and that's kind of the the reaction that i'm hoping happens here is, you know, if we want to say Halloween ends was the end, I'm cool with that. It, you know, knowing like you're saying, it'll never really be over. Um, but I'm, I'm cool with right. that in, in the hopes that other, you know, massive franchises look around and go, why don't we do that? And Texas Chainsaw Massacre literally just did that. They like made their own Halloween 2018 on that Netflix. Yeah, totally movie. did. I, th I thought it was all right, but, but, you know, I, I thought it was I, fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a pretty fun yeah, movie. Fun. Um, yeah. it kind of came out of nowhere for me. I had no idea it was even being made. So I just turned on Netflix one day and I was like, Oh yeah. shit, that, that says 2022 or whatever it said. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I is, wish that that's the thing about like, I'm sorry. Oh, Oh, go ahead. The thing about like Halloween in general, like I've read all the forums about people like talking about series and stuff like that. I've always wanted to see like if I'm going to give my one critique on like these movies in general and it will kind of back into my intake on Rob Zombie stuff is these movies are classics, always will be. And they always kind of deserve to be going to the theater to see because it's an event. It's called Halloween for a reason. It's an event. Other movies can kind of get away with that because they're their own thing, you know? Um, right. I mean, you're not going to see Psycho get rebooted and, and turn into a, a Netflix series, you know? <laughs> and it, somebody's going to watch this and probably have that idea now. But Right, yeah, anyway. no, that's, that's uh, going to happen now. So, for example, like, Rob Zombie is such a huge fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series, Massacre series. So for him to do his own version of Halloween, which John Carpenter gave him his blessing, he said, make it your own. But those movies are good, but it doesn't feel like Michael Myers to me when I watch it. It doesn't. It feels like 
okay, Rob Zombie's been to Chicago before in Illinois in general. Yeah, there's some like rednecky people, but it's not Louisiana rednecky. You know, let's no. just be honest. That it's not white trash the way that he likes it because he is actually he those movies should have been Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies with that story. That's what it should have been. That's my opinion. But to put Michael Myers' face on it is kind of a little bit of a disgrace, in my opinion. I'm still a fan, but that's my opinion on that. So, no, I've never heard it yeah. said like that, and I totally agree, man. I, 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 you know, obviously, and I'm, I'm with you. Like, I turn on those movies, I have a good time. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is sort of just like over the top white trash the entire time, and, and it's it, yeah. If you go to Chicago, that's, that's not fan really. Of, yeah. That's that's not what you're gonna find, but yeah, you watch any of Rob Zombie's no. movies, they're all kind of in that vein. Um, so yeah, I hear you. And and Texas Chainsaw Massacre leans right into that. You nailed it right on the head. Yeah. And and they hold a special part in my heart. I always will, just because they're a film. That's why I don't think that any so for all the like haters on ends, for example, they're like remake the movie, all this shit. And here's the thing: you should be lucky enough that these movies are being made and they're being made so you could go to the theaters to watch them because there's so many watered down horror franchises that get that are not good that continuously get worse hellraiser is a great example of that you yeah. know i'm a fan of the remake or the, the the retelling but there's so there's if you're a gigantic pinhead fan and hellraiser fan which i am of the first couple then you just see a watered down, just awful version of it. Nightmare on Elm Street does the same thing. You know, they're all fans of ours. But Halloween, don't I don't think you should ever be mad about what you're seeing when you see the shape on screen. Honestly, that's that, just my opinion on the franchise. So that is something. All the haters really pissed me off. About. Actually, oh, yeah. yeah, all the haters yeah. pissed me off a lot, man. It really did. And I don't open my mouth, but that's just my opinion on it. So, I mean, if you're if you're listening, you know, because you should be <laughs> lucky that you're getting any type of thing from Michael Myers, because he's the king when it comes to this. I mean, uh, Bruce Campbell said it in one of those horror movies or not, horror uh, shows, uh, you know, he, Halloween's the Cadillac of horror movies. So enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know? and, and I think that is something yeah. that like. I have always tried to tell people like when I'm talking to maybe a non horror fan about Halloween, um, because the horror genre in, in general can kind of get like a bad name because I, I always say it's a mountain of shit with like that peak of the mountain. That's incredible. Um, and you, you usually have to kind of, you know, hike through the shit to get to that pinnacle. Uh, but it, it, for the, for the most part, like Halloween really has never like slipped too far down that mountain where, you know, leprechauns going to the hood, Jason's going to space. It's, it's gotten insane for even some of these franchises that are, were at one time really well respected. Um, yeah. and I don't think Michael Myers has ever really dipped too far into the like cheesiness or, or like. I don't know. I don't know what you'd want to call it, but I think we're talking about the same thing where it's like they're not yeah. overall the quality has stayed pretty pretty high for a horror movie. Yeah, 100%. They hold true to what they are and I think they always will. Yeah, uh, there's reasons to hate these movies, some of these movies. I get it. I'm not going to be like, "Oh, your your opinion's wrong." You know, I'm not doing that. I, yeah, I said, "Fuck you" because your opinion's so strong, but <laughs> Guess what? You know, just be humble and lucky that these even happened and that Michael Myers didn't go to space, you know, uh, because that just wouldn't make any sense. It just doesn't. No. And doesn't. It's just dumb, you know. They they have done it, and I think because uh, the fan base is so strong, especially with this franchise, um, I think that the hands that they go into take them with a little bit more care. Um, then, then even I would say Friday the 13th, I think if, if you handed Friday the 13th off to uh, a new party now, um, I, I think they have more freedom to do, to do whatever they want with it, where I think there are kind of guidelines for a Halloween movie, um, that people expect and, and want, uh, moving forward. Yeah, I, I a hundred percent agree. I mean, 
it's so tough on some of the other ones to an ex- there's certain things about each one that uh or whatever but halloween just is it just stays its own thing you know and i love that so no you can't you can't you can't yeah. touch that franchise you gotta you gotta yeah. leave it as it is yeah. and only only add to it in in a good way and i and i agree i think the new movies did that and i agree that we are lucky even even with ends and i hear the criticisms i get yeah. why people don't like it i love it but I get why people don't like it. If you're going into it wanting kills, you you are going to be disappointed. Um, but but yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, man, it is it is like we still get to go to the theaters and watch Michael Myers murder people. It's 2023, like, and it's yeah. going to happen later in life too. It's it's awesome. Um, I get so excited every time when when uh, you know just talk about that when when kills ended my wife and I, we would always go to the show place in St. Louis park for it. And oh, yeah. yeah, it's such a great theater. They have a good bar. They have everything. We had dinner. I mean, we make it a serious event when we go see one of these movies. We like, I literally every single time, but anyways, um, when, when kills was over, it, I just kind of almost was out of steam because of how, intense everything felt and i kind of was that way for ends but i also felt like a relaxation because just like jamie lee says when kills ramps up it goes it's it's when you hit (laughs) you know 85 you keep going and uh ends has a story i think the the soundtrack is incredible uh it's a lot of fun it's just really 80s and it obviously playing on the season the witch vibe um i liked all the conspiracies of what was going to happen and i like actually the ideas of what could have happened in ends better than how it did actually end but i'm still a huge fan of the way that it did end but those type of speculation ideas i think were really fascinating and could have been like what if you know that is really fun i'm totally yeah. and that and yeah. that was something that you had brought up earlier um that that I do want to touch on is is you had said there's kind of some other ideas. We got another guest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my wife and daughter just sat down. <laughs> no worries. Um, we we got uh, you know there's there's ends and and you said there there are some things that you would have done differently. Um, yeah. looking at it now, what, so let me know. Like what 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 would you have done uh, to kind of correct that last film to be exactly how you want? One of the fan theories. That I kept on like, okay, babe, this is what's going to happen in the film. <laughs> this is the crazy thing that could have been. The uh, My thought of the epic Michael Myers, Jamie Lee Curtis battle yep. at the end kind of ended with both of them more or less dying, right? But then what happens is, and this is one of the theories that it shows Jamie Lee, which I think they kind of like foreshadowed in maybe another version of her actually dying. Yeah. But then it cuts to blank and then it shows Jamie in the hospital as if it was Halloween two in 1981. Oh, wow. And it shows her being in a coma and all of the things that have ever happened during any of the timelines since 1978 were all completely a dream. Wow. So what that does is it completely erases all timelines from 1978 and past, which they kind of already tried to do. But it, it, it deletes everything. I thought that was cool. Oh, dude, I love that, man. And, yeah. and it it brings everything together and no... no n- no scene has been wasted. No, no movie has been wasted in that. So 18 kills everything. I mean, it all, it all was a dream, you know, basically. And it's all in her imagination after being in a coma, after being in the first one, then they could have restarted everything and done whatever. Obviously it still confuses the shit out of people, (laughs) but you know, besides the point, it's still, it is what it is, you know? Um, so that idea. And then the end of, um, ends where it zooms up to the mask and shows the silver shamrock emblem on the mask. I thought that was cool too, with like the whole radio tower thing. I thought that was fascinating as well. So I had, I had heard that one pretty recently actually. And uh, I, I think that's a great idea because it doesn't mean that Michael Myers was part of that same experiments or, or whatever that happened in H three. 
Um, but it it goes, hey, this is kind of connected, and uh, you know, I I I think that would have worked. But uh, no, I hear you. Um, there are lots of ways. I always imagined that Lori and Michael would end that film stabbing each other at the same time or or you know in in some sense them both going down at the same time but uh you know i think it did end right i i don't know i'm i'm sure you probably know of the kind of scrapped original ending <laughs> with lori i kind of don't actually I, I tried to kind of stay focused on what i knew because there were so many theories that were just confusing at that point but what what is it i mean you know it obviously so, and it's in the book, I believe, still. I haven't finished the book. Uh, but the the original ending was sort of that, you know, she gives her speech that sh- uh, evil changes shape. Yep. Um, but at the end of it, it would be uh, like basically insinuating that the evil has now passed on to Lori. Like uh, she would see Hawkins and give him a weird look and he would be like creeped out by her in the same way that like Corey was creeping out Lori. Um, she would now be that. And for the most part, I'm glad that they didn't do that because I don't yeah. love the idea of Michael being this like infection that can be passed. He's a virus. Yeah. yeah. Right. The, the Jason goes to hell, um, sort yeah. of <laughs> vibe. Um, and, and and I think there are people who still think that that's what happened with Corey when they have their eye, you know, orgasm scene or whatever. And then, but, but I don't think that that's what Michael Myers is to me. So I'm glad that they left that open a little bit more. Um, yeah. But w- what do you think about that? Oh God, that's heavy, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I thought a lot about, I mean, and I know what they tried to do, what uh, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride tried to do was foreshadow every movie within the old franchise in the current trilogy. So the eye look was from, I can't remember which one, but there's something that connects with that. But I love the fact that that's an idea and I, what the best part is that you can just leave it up to interpretation and speculation, you know? Um, I mean, it's cool. Um, I don't think they really knew what to do because I think they knew people were going to love it or hate it. I think the idea of, uh, scrapping everything and Lori waking up in the, I think that would have been the best ending. I don't think there could have been a better ending. So if David Gordon green ever watches this. I mean, you can't go back, but that's, that was a no. good one. So, I, I I love yeah. that and and just the fact that like you can go okay is is four five six seven eight is it are these all different memories or weird coma dreams that that yeah. Lori is having after you know being attacked by Michael Myers in 1978, dude. I I love that. Um, <laughs> so that, now I'm gonna go have to go to bed tonight and like think of that all night. So thanks <laughs> for that. Um, oh, dude, I had I kind of. <laughs> You know, like those memes where you're like, what is he thinking about? <laughs> I think you guys have brought that up before, but I'm like, I'm during that time frame, I mean, that's what was on my mind a lot. You know, my my wife, um, my daughter, guitars and horror are my favorite things in the world. So, you yeah. know, yeah. So uh horror is just right up there with them all. So totally, know. yeah. No, yeah. and that I I will say the last five years of the Halloween franchise have been for me, the most exciting that I can ever remember. And it's been such an awesome time to be a fan um, that I just, I look forward to the next time uh, something like this happens. And I think, you know, give it some time to breathe, let people yeah. sit with this newest trilogy. But, you know, I'm going to, the second they announce it, man, my, my excitement is going to be through the roof until I'm in that seat. Um, you know, one thing I really like about you guys doing this now so I'm a fan of like other podcasts like Wolfman's and um, and uh, Jimmy Champagne and all those guys. Those are, they're great, but they really only kind of get their feedback. And there's other guys too that are very cool, but they really get their inspiration from what's current. They're not oh. continuing something as you guys are. That's why I'm such a fan of what you guys are doing. It's so cool because there is times where there's Halloween nerds like us that can keep this going on and talking about this because there's so much to talk about. I mean, we've been talking for, you know, 40 minutes and we didn't even dive into anything else yet, you know, no. on the other movies. So, you know, 
it's, and then there's like the comic book nerds. I mean, it goes so in depth and far. It's just its own thing. It's like Star Wars. So I so yeah. so this is this is good that we're talking about this because Blaine doesn't watch any of the Star Wars movies. He's not into that. But like yeah. I'm I'm a bad. I got Darth Vader right here. I saw yeah. Um and. Uh, it, it is kind of one of those things. So uh, for the most part, Star Wars is kind of in a lull right now between yeah. like real movies or, I mean, they're pushing out TV shows down your throat every two minutes. But um, I, I, I think it's in that same vein where I watch these like other channels that are talking about these movies that I love in interim. And there's not a whole lot of that from Michael Myers. So Blaine and yeah. I could talk about Michael Myers. If you put us in a room for the next 75 years, we'd still be talking. People ask, is there enough to talk about for like a continued weekly podcast? Hell yes. I will always Agreed. talk about Michael Myers. Um, and, and it's so cool to, to have a guy like you on here, Eric. Uh, I can't thank, thank you. you enough for uh, being on the show and say kind words about the podcast. We're going to have to get you back on here uh, once, once Blaine is, back to full health i mean it's looking like you know he's dropping off the podcast for good now but he'll be back i promise um, oh, i'm sure he'll be all right yeah i mean i think a lot of sickness just kind of went around i'm just getting over it myself but you know for what it's worth yeah you guys are doing awesome and thank you it's 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 great and thanks for plugging the band as well too um everything's just it all goes hand in hand together so Totally. Yeah. Be yeah. Before you, before we go here, do you want to, do you want to plug anything, any upcoming shows? I, we talked about a, a EP coming out. Yep. Um, hit it, hit us with everything. Obviously I'm going to have links in the description for all that good stuff. Cool. Yeah. So, um, just www.diagost.com. That's where you can literally find everything. It has a link tree spread on there that will go YouTube, Instagram, TikTok soundcloud spotify uh our website you could buy t-shirts from it uh you can buy our stickers patches uh current cds that we have out right now so i mean that's just the main thing digos.com um the band uh was on uh, a, a a decent hiatus after uh, the last uh, guitar player is no longer in the band and I obviously took over. So we've been rebuilding the band again um, and then filling me in on the new songs for, uh, so the plan is ultimately we're going to release a, an EP here uh, this like going into summer. That's our plan right now. We want to try to get it around as much as possible you know, we after we played our last show, like I was saying earlier, people have started asking, "Hey, can you do this show? Can you do this show?" Because they enjoyed the performance, uh, which is great and very humbling. So, um, there, I just looked at my calendar a little bit ago. There's a handful of shows that will start being announced very soon uh, in the Minneapolis area and hopefully the surrounding areas. So that that will definitely be a thing that you could see us here soon. Uh, but the plan is, yeah, an EP here soon and then a full length uh, next year, uh, which we've been currently working on all those songs. I've heard all the demos, been learning the songs for the new stuff. And it's fun. It's cool. Uh, like I was saying earlier, there's just more of a little bit of mix of everything. There's a really good um, kind of no effects, the decline-esque somewhat song that I really, really enjoy. Um those guys might not agree with me because I don't know how much no effects fans they are, but I, I hear it. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I enjoy going to practice and all that. So it's, it sounds like things are moving in the right direction and you're, you're going to see me and Blaine at one of these shows, man. Cause, cause yeah. I gotta, I gotta see you live now. I gotta see how you shred. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. the Crypticon well, too, uh, that's not announced yet, but that's a, a hopeful plan. So that's one thing that we want to do. You know, for anybody that watches that, that's what we want to do again. So I haven't been to Crypticon in years, and I think this is the first year I'm going to be able to get back into it. So cool. we'll have to uh, we'll have to chat there, too, man. But yeah. uh, until next time we have you on the show, thank you so much for being on here. Again. Thanks, Austin. Thanks, and, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate having you on the show and we'll we'll catch you next time, man. All right, man. Later. See ya. What an what an awesome guy. Uh Super cool. I think like anytime I can nerd out uh, with anybody on this, it's it's super cool. And then like I'm I'm a music guy um, to to kind of hear uh, the inspiration how it kind of flows from A to B here is is super cool for me too. I mean, 
uh, it sounds like we have a lot of the same kind of taste in in music so it, it's it, it's just cool so um yeah thank thank you guys for watching uh, i'm gonna kind of wrap things up here a little bit shorter uh but we got uh blaine coming back next week we're gonna get back with uh the fan of the week i know i haven't been doing it there's no reason i've been here alone i should be filling time but i don't and i'm an idiot and that that is what it is but really cannot say enough good stuff about eric and die ghost the band please look in the uh description www.dieghost.com um and and check out their music i think if you are a fan of horror movies if you are a fan of michael myers etc if you're a fan of the show check them out and uh you know we'll definitely be checking out the uh the band in person because they're our neighbor i did not realize this I'm, I'm sure Blaine probably knew, um, this was sort of, uh, you know, he usually handles the, the, the talent bringing onto the show. And, uh, you know, last minute he said, dude, I'm still coughing every five minutes having cough attacks. So, uh, you gotta, you gotta carry this one out again. So at least you guys did not have to hear me rant again for an hour. And in fact, got a pretty sweet guest on, on the show. So, um, you know, with that being said, make sure to uh, check us out on Instagram as well. Halloween.lives.podcast. Um, give the show a like and a subscribe if you feel like it earned it. I hope it did. Um, we've got lots of fun stuff coming down the pipeline, including Live 25, our 25th episode, uh, which I, for the love of God, can never remember the date, but it is in uh july let me just pull it up uh because i'm very prepared uh to be the solo podcast host it is july 7th which is a friday um so if you would like to be a part of that show we're going to be giving away 300 dollars in prizes we're going to have some guests new and old from from the show that you've seen or haven't seen already um and we're going to be talking to you guys the fans just like we did tonight where it's you know, just nerding out on some Halloween shit, man. Nothing's better than that for me. Um, so, so yeah, if, if you want to be a part, um, hit us up on Instagram, send us a DM. We'll get you on the list and, uh, hopefully it goes. Okay. We've never done a live show, uh, but it is something that we want to do moving forward. And I think the episode 25 is a perfect time to start. Also got to say, Shout it out that we had 299 subscribers on the last episode. Uh, as it stands now, we are at, let's see here. We are at 323. So I don't know what the hell I said right last time, but I can't thank you enough um, because it it's just, it's freaking cool, man. I, I don't know, like to be doing this, to be putting it out and knowing it's not just going out into the void. It's, it's being watched and shared by people just like me and Blaine that are huge fans of this. Really cool, and I can't thank you enough. Um, so with that being said, we will see you uh, next Friday um, for episode 20, man. Episode 20, and, and we got other cool shit coming down the pipeline. So with that being said, my name is Austin Duncan. Thank you for watching Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Michael Myers the podcast of Michael Myers. We will see you next time. This is why I don't do outros yet again. <laughs>